Excel time. Stand by. It's still an Excel time. Mama, it's still an Excel time. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 190. How many kits are available to sell? All right, today's question uh, sent in by Tim, watches our uh, Dueling Excel videos. He works for a retailer and is asked to create a spreadsheet to show our sales team what we own and what we can sell. Sounds simple, right? Uh, but here's the catch. The item they sell contains multiple cartons and are inventoried on a per carton basis. Here's an example of what he's saying. seeing. So here's uh, this item, P12345, has three different things that they have to ship. And in the kit requires four of carton one, one of carton two, and one of carton three. And this is how many they have in stock. All right, so just doing the math here, they have two complete sets of carton one, four complete sets of carton two, and three complete sets of carton three. But that means the what they can sell is the minimum of those three numbers. They can only sell two. And here they have uh, four complete sets of carton four, four of carton five, two of carton three, only one of carton seven. That's the limiting item. So in this case, they can only sell one of these. All right, now a question for a later day. I said, well, is there any chance that carton three is used in more than one place? And he says, yes, but we're going to worry about that later. All right, so here's how I'm going to attack this. I can actually think of several different ways to attack this. So this might be interesting. This might be a uh, uh, back and forth uh, type of duel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a helper column out here. Uh, and the helper column is going to look on an item by item basis of how many uh, we can sell. So equal eight divided by four like that. And we'll double click to, to copy it down. But let's say that we needed four and we had six. All right, so now it's going to say 1.5. Well, you can't sell, you know, half a couch. All right, so it's going to have to be the, the whole number. So what I'm going to do here is use the int int, the integer of that thing, which will uh, take off the decimals and leave us just uh, the whole amount. All right, so then we have uh, eight back to the original number, and we need to figure out for each item here what's the smallest number over in column E. Make sure the data is sorted by product. Go to the data tab, choose subtotals. At each change in product, use the min function. You know, I teach subtotals all the time in my Power Excel seminars. And I point out there's 11 functions here, but I've never used anything other than sum and count. So while subtotal may not be the fastest way to do this, I want to be able to say that there was actually one time where I was able to use something other than sum and count. All right, click OK. And what we're going to get is every time the uh, carton number, the product number changes, uh, we get to see the min. And that min is the answer that we want. So I collapse down to the number 2 view. I'll select uh, all of this data and Alt semicolon to select just the visible cells, Control C, and then we'll come down here and paste. Let's just paste out to this area, Control V. All right, delete the extra columns. And then we have to get rid of the word min, and not just the word min, but space min. All right, so I'm going to use Control H and change every occurrence of space min to nothing. Replace all, click OK, click Close, and there's our table of what we have available to sell. All right, Mike, I'll throw it over to you. Wow, Mr. Excel, I love it. The min function in subtotals. How cool is that? All right, I'm going to go over to this sheet right here. I'm going to do the same helper column, int. We'll take on hand divided by re required quantity, close parentheses, control enter. Double click and send it down. Now I just need to find the min available for a given condition or criteria. I'm going to select product, control shift down arrow, control C to copy. Then I'm going to right arrow, control V. Then I'm going to come up and say remove duplicates. There it is. I used to use advanced filter unique records only all the time, but it seems like this method is faster. There's my unique list. Now I'm going to come over here. How many? And I'm going to use the new function min ifs. Now min ifs is in Office 365 for Excel 2016 or later. 
the min range. Well, I need to find the minimum value in this column. Control Shift down arrow F4, comma, and the criteria range. That's going to be this whole product. Control Shift down arrow F4, comma, left arrow. And there we go. That will get the min value from how many based on the condition or criteria. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, so there's min ifs and subtotal. I'm going to throw it back over to you, Mr. Excel. Yes, Mike, very nice. Remove duplicates to get the unique list of products, and then the min ifs function. I asked him uh, what version of Excel he's on. He said Excel 2016. I hope it's Office 365 version of 2016, so he has access to that. Well, how about a pivot table? All right, so I created a pivot table with product and requires some are required quantities, some of on hand, and then from right here, Analyze fields, items, and sets, calculated field, and created a new calculated field called available, which is on hand divided by required quantity. That way I don't need the helper column over here. And it first it seemed like it was going to work because we had two, three, and four, and the reporting that the minimum is two. I changed this calculation, of course, to min. Um, and, and that seemed good. But then on this one, where you have two, four, four, one, two, it's reporting. 3 and what's happening is it's doing the calculation on this row. We have 25 on hand divided by 8. That's 3 in a fraction and so it's reporting 3 and so no a regular pivot table calculated item is not going to work. But instead, convert this data to a table and then insert a pivot table, add this data to the data model, click okay. All right, now what we're going to have down the left-hand side, product and what it requires. I'm going to create two implicit measures here with a required quantity and some of on hand. And then I'm going to create a new measure. So power pivot, measure, a new measure. And this new measure will be called available to sell. And that formula is going to be uh, how many we have on hand divided by how many are required for each item. And click. Okay. All right, so 8 divided by 4 is 2. All right, now that's still not our right answer. And we probably need to run this through the uh, uh, the integer function. So measures, we're going to manage our measures, edit this, and wrap the whole thing inside the INT function like this. Click OK and click close. And now we're getting a fractional number. Still, the wrong answer here, but uh, we're going to use a great new function that's only available in DAX, uh, new measure, and this is going to be called kit available. And the function is not min, but min x, min x, the minx function. All right, and the table that we're going to use is table one, and then the expression is going to be that. Uh, available to sell that we just calculated. And what this does, the min x function evaluates uh, on a row by row basis and finds the minimum. All right, so we'll click kit available, OK, and we'll check this out. So here where we have 2, 4, 4, 1, and 2, it's reporting 1. All right, now in a perfect world, all we have is product and kit available. We don't need any of this other stuff in the middle. All right, so we're just going to check this here. 2, 1, 3, 2 are our answers. I'll take the requires out. 2, 1, 3, 2. Yes, it's going to work. We actually take all the intermediate calculations out and just have kit available like that. Mike, do you have another one? How cool is that, Mr. Excel? You use the minx function in DAX. Well, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to use a formula, but I'm going to pretend like I don't even have this helper column. I used min ifs. Well, before min ifs in Excel 2016, there was the aggregate function in Excel 2010. Now, I want to use min, but of course, functions 1 to 13 do not let you do array formulas. So I'm going to have to use small 1 as a substitute for the min function. And small is one of the functions 14 and above that can handle array operations. That argument right there, array. So function number 15, comma, 
I want to ignore divide by zero error. So I'm going to type a 6 to ignore errors, comma. And I need to simulate that whole helper column in the array argument. INT, and instead of simply saying on hand divided by require, we do the whole column. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Divided by the required column. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Now close parentheses. That int right there, if I highlight this and hit F9, it simulates that entire how many helper column. Control Z. Now I simply divide it by in parentheses. I need to get an array of trues and falses. So I click in product, Control Shift down our F4, and I ask the question, are any of you equal to that product ID? Close parentheses. That will give me a bunch of trues and falses. F9, trues and falses in the denominator. True will become a 1, false will become a 0, which will give us divide by 0 error, Control Z. In essence, if I click the whole array and hit F9, the divide by 0 is going to be our filter. So we only see the numbers for a particular product, Control Z. And then, of course, aggregate will pick the min out from that array of errors and numbers. Close parentheses. And aggregate's amazing. One of five functions that has an argument that can handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. So I simply Control-Enter and F2. What did I forget? Backspace. Array. Then I type a comma. And the K is 1, because I always want small 1, which is the min. Close parentheses. Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. F2, all right, uh, aggregate with that whole helper column right there to get how many for each product. All right, I'm going to throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Hey, that's beautiful. I knew there'd be a lot of uh, different ways to solve this. I did not think of using aggregate, which of course is better because if someone has 2010, this will work. Uh, the 15 allows an array out here that is gorgeous. All right, now, hey, when I set up the question, I dismissed this, you know, and, and Mike, you know this, when people send us questions, they try and minimize the situation to make it sound like it's easy. Uh, but the thing that's going to be a, a disaster here is the fact that Carton 3 is used in multiple places, all right? And as soon as they sell uh, something from, uh, let's say they sell like this item, P12346, uh, well, then the number of carton threes on hand uh, is going to change, right? And so that's going to Im possibly impact what else we can sell, right? So thinking about how Tim is going to have to manage this process, he's going to have to wait, have a way to regenerate this uh, this item quickly. And so hopefully he has an inventory table and for every item. Uh, it'll show how many there are on hand and then a V lookup here to pull the inventory over, all right? That's what I'm hoping is going to happen because then it might become somewhat manageable and if this is something we have to reproduce again and again and again uh, then Power Query uh, definitely has uh, a use here. So Power Query in Excel 2010 or 2013 you're going to go download it you have your own Power Query tab but in Excel 2016 you're going to look for the Get and Transform. It's funny in Excel 2016 it was the second group but then in Office 365 they moved it to be the first group. Power Query has the ability to take something from a table or range, so I'm going to choose one cell in this table, Control T, that will create a table for me. Uh, table 3 is a fine name, I don't need to rename that. Now that this is a table, we go to Data, From Table or Range, and we are going to add a new column. This column is going to be a custom column, it's going to be called Available, and that is going to be the on hand divided by required quantity. All right, now we need to send this into the INT function. Unfortunately, the functions in Power Query are not the same. Uh, so click here and then go to formula types and you'll find uh, this function is called number dot round down and this is case sensitive. You have to make sure to use that exact same case. So equal number dot round down open paren and close paren and we click OK, and so 11 divided by 4 is 2.75, rounds down to 2. All right, that's the answer we need there. We don't need these columns anymore, so I click on Require, Shift-click on On Hand, 
and remove those columns. All right, now choose product, transform, group by, we're going to group by the product, and the new function is going to be called kits available, and the operation is going to be the min of the available column. Click OK. All right, so now we have product and kits available, home, close and load, get a brand new sheet with our answers. But here's the beautiful thing. All right, so when we sell something, let's uh, make these columns less wide uh, and we sell, let's say we sell enough so we have no carton threes left. I changed that number there. The VLOOKUPs bring the results and then come back here, choose this and refresh all. And you see that now we have none of this and this and this available to sell because they all needed that carton three and we have none of those left. Being able to refresh the Power Query is going to help uh, this in the end. Well, this was a fun one uh, for me because I knew there would be a lot of different ways to solve this problem. Uh, the, the episode wrap up of this really long episode. Uh, how many of each item is available to sell and there's multiple cartons. All right, so the first thing I did uh, was add a helper column and then use subtotals with the min function and then a whole bunch of really uh, boring steps. Mike method number two, use min ifs, which is great if you have Office 365. Uh, I went back to a pivot table, but a regular pivot table won't work. Instead, have to do a data model and then use the minx function, the min x function, uh, and that calculated field or measure will actually work. Mike, using the aggregate function, beautiful function, one of five functions that can accept an array as an argument without control shift enter. And then method five, convert the data to a table and use Power Query, also known as get and transform. Uh, and we're going to calculate on hand divided by needed and then the number dot round down function to convert to an integer, group by part name number and uh, calculate the minimum available, close and load and the bonus it's refreshable. Well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. It's Dueling Excel time.